The school um, where Jonathan Swain is reporting from this morning is in the constituency of Jonathan Ashworth. <laughs> uh, very good morning to you. Um, he, you were Shadow Minister for Work and Pensions. You've been re replaced by Liz Kendall. You're now Shadow Paymaster General. I'm not sure that's a title that people may be familiar with in great detail. Can you just tell us what that means, Jonathan Ashworth? Good morning. Oh, it, it just means I'm a Shadow Cabinet Office uh, Minister with apparently with a remit for uh, coming on shows like yours yes. more often. Um, but I'm really pleased that my uh, neighbour Liz Kendall is has got the work and pensions brief. But I'm actually pleased that you've uh, gone to the Mayflower Primary School in my constituency there this morning. That I, I couldn't hear the um, the feed because we couldn't get the um, the earpiece to work at that moment. But uh, they were presumably telling you that that school closed at around Easter time. The pupils have been spread across something like four or five different sites, some of them going to a site on a secondary school, some of them going to community centres, and thank you to the various community groups and the various places of worship, like the local mosque, who have opened up their doors to allow sh pupils to go there. Currently now, the head teacher is busing pupils every day across the city to another secondary school. And yes, at some point, we're going to get new temporary... Uh, uh, classrooms built, if you like, but probably not until February. This is a complete and utter shambles. And parents across the country, pupils across the country, if they understand what is going on, because obviously some of these pupils are very, very young, staff as well, are looking at this aghast. They're worried about whether their schools are safe for themselves. We're obviously worried about the disruption to education. I was talking to a head teacher yesterday and it, who said to me, these are darker days than COVID for his school because it's been shut, shut and it's been affected by this. And the government's response is, frankly, shambolic. Jonathan, the Education just, Secretary Jonathan yesterday Ashworth, swearing on the TV. You? They need yeah, to get a grip. Okay. So you're the local MP. What conversations have you had with the Department for Education since uh, Christmas when the school was uh, su suspected that they might have this rack and then April when the survey was done to confirm it? Well, I've spoken to the uh, Department for Education. Uh, uh, I mean, I was actually speaking to them on Friday, funnily enough, just exactly about this school. I mean, we keep getting promises, oh, yeah, we're going to sort it out, don't worry about but it, we've got a plan. But did you have conversations with the Department for Education about this school, either back since Christmas last year or April? Because, look, Gillian Keegan is obviously frustrated that all the responsibility is coming down on her. A lot of people would say that's entirely re reasonable. She's the Secretary of State for our children's education. But you're the local MP. I wonder if, you know, you're one of those people in the firing line. No, no, what been, did know, you I've... do for these schools when you knew there was a problem? No, I've, I've, I've spoken to the Department for Education since April about, about this particular school in my constituency. We This school is... Um, out of kilter from a lot of the other schools because the, it was identified earlier on at this school and they closed around the uh, around the Easter holidays in uh, uh, April and I've had conversations with the Department of Education since then. And what have and they pushed, said? What did they say in April? Them that we need this sorting out. And look, you get I mean, like, you, when you talk to officials, you quite rightly get uh, uh, warm words. But in the end, in the end, what the Department of Education need is for the Treasury to stump up the cash, the funding, for these schools to be rebuilt, have roofs replaced, if that is what is needed. And, of course, yesterday we found out that there were officials at the Department for Education asking Rishi Sunak to give them the cash, and he cut it back. He cut back the funding. And I think, in many ways, the fact that schools across the country now have got their roofs being held up by uh, iron steel plinths, I think, is an indictment of 13 years now of Conservative government. Uh, I also want to ask you about Gillian Keegan's comments to Dan Hewitt when she thought that um, she was having the mic uh, switched off. Let's just have a listen. Thank you, thank you very much. Thank you. Does anyone ever say, you know what, you've done a good job because everyone else has sat on their and done nothing? No, no, no signs of that, no? Um, you it's have also... There. What was that? I was just cringing at that. Yeah. It's very. Were you cringing partly because you remembered your own uh, hot mic moment <laughs> when back in 2019, when you were Shadow Health Secretary, you were secretly recorded giving an assessment of your leader, Corb Jeremy Corbyn's chances? Do you remember that? I I've do been going that. around these national places. It's dire for Labour. It's it dire. Was. It's awful for them. And it's the combination of Corbyn 
and Brexit. Yes, it's it, abysmal it, out there. I do rather watched. remember, it, Jonathan, those comments being rather accurate at the yes, time. Exactly. I wonder whether... Was that really a hot mic moment or did you know what you were doing? Oh, no, I think, uh, um, as I said at the time, I was uh, 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 telling somebody who I thought... I was slightly telling them, you know... I thought I was exaggerating to them how bad the result was going to be. It turned out the result was far worse than my uh, exaggerations. But, look, the, you know, what we've seen yesterday, though, is this education secretary expecting parents, expecting teachers to congratulate her for what they've done when we've got parents across the country really worried about whether their school is safe because not all schools have had the surveys, not all schools have had the proper inspections. We had Rishi Sunak yesterday saying there could be more schools impacted by this. And for Gillian Keegan to expect the British public to thank her, I think it just in the end shows you and reveals that after 13 years, this is a last gasp government who have lost, a, have got no grip. And whether it's whether it's putting sewage into our rivers, whether it's the shambles of air traffic control, whether it is our crumbling schools with roofs potentially falling in, nothing works in this country anymore. So are you, uh, after Jonathan? Are years. you calling? Are you calling for her to resign today? Uh, no, 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 because I'm not getting into the personality politics of it. But I want the government to get a grip. But I fear they're not able to get a grip because I think, as I say, they've run out of ideas and they've run out of steam after 13 years. You know, I think in the end, it's why the, the country is crying out for change and it's why we need a general election. One other question on the, the reshuffle. You've been moved from doing the work and pensions job to, as you said, a job at the centre, preparing for government, but also leading the, the attack. All the papers um, describe this as, um, the Times says, Blairites lead Labour reshuffle. Um, there's been a lot of changes yesterday. What message do you think Keir Starmer is trying to send to... Westminster and to the country about his reshuffle. What does it tell us about him as a leader and the next Labour government? Well, I think he's putting a very strong team on the pitch, uh, in contrast to a very weak team on Rishi Sunak's side. And I think we are working hard as a team to uh, rebuild our trust with the British people, to, to show the British people that we have a plan to fix the waiting lists, which means our hospitals are currently grinding to a halt, to fix schools, to grow our economy and create good well-paid jobs in our economy, to bring people's energy bills down. And we've got that strong team on the pitch. We're taking nothing for granted. We know we've still got to work really, really hard because we had an abysmal general election result a few years ago, as you've just reminded me and as I predicted. But that is a strong team and we're working hard All to right. win the next election. Jonathan Ashworth, thanks very much indeed.